Google Cloud Next 2017 hosted a plethora of talks detailing the future of cloud. If you didn't get a chance to catch building serverless applications with Google Cloud Functions, stay tuned because here's the recap. There's a fancy new phrase in the computing world known as serverless applications, which might be just a little misleading. See, serverless doesn't mean not using servers, but instead it means that you don't need to think about deployment, provisioning, or managing of the servers, that you're working in a pay-for-what-you-use model where you deploy functions, not apps, and you're working in an event-based or event-oriented model. To understand why this is a helpful idea, let's do a recap. In a typical cloud computing application, you have to set up and provision some VMs which handle traffic. The number of VMs you need is typically a function of traffic volume, and in order to respond to requests efficiently, you typically have to over-provision. This leads to wasted money, since you're only using those resources in spiky scenarios. Now, recently, containers were added to the concept of cloud computing, which allow you to deploy a container on a VM, which can handle traffic by itself. The, uh, the difference here is that as traffic rises, you can allocate a new container on the same VM rather than a whole new VM itself. However, you end up back in the same problem if you end up with modulus overhead between the number of containers and the number of VMs you have allocated. Serverless is another way to tackle this problem, where you break down your application into the smallest functions possible. You then deploy each function and give it the ability to handle capacity. Then let some other system handle provisioning and allocation in order to reduce over-provisioning costs. This is exactly the service that Google Cloud Functions provides. It's a serverless environment to build and connect services through code, which means that you don't need to think about servers, you only pay for what you use, and it's all event-oriented. Here's a small example. Internal and external services can emit events, like uh, changes to a cloud storage bucket. And cloud functions you've defined will respond to those events, which can write back to the cloud or call other APIs. Now, developing a cloud function is really straightforward. Uh, simply use your existing knowledge of Node.js and Express frameworks, deploy your HTTP or background functions, and you're ready to go. But the best part about all this is that cloud functions come built in with Firebase and Stackdriver support, which means that you get access to things like analytics, database access, authentication events, logging, monitoring, and even an emulator so you can develop and test locally rather than in production. Check out the recording of Jason's full session to learn more details and see some great demos for moving your existing applications to Google Cloud Platform. And if you want more recaps on great Next content, make sure to check out the rest of our playlist. And don't forget the Next World Tour coming soon to a city near you. <laughs>